Good morning, Insurance Syndicate. Happy Thursday. Hope everybody's having a great day. Um, I have today, as y'all know, because we've been talking about it, my buddy, Coach Michael Burt, on with us today. I assume you can hear me loud and clear, Coach. Yes, I can. Sound Perfect. good? Your new mic is crisp, bro. Chris. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I wanted new mics in every location so yeah. that at any time I do a podcast, so I had my assistant say, give me a bunch of mics for every location I'm at. That way it sounds good. Yeah, yeah. and consistent, right? If I'm going to do this many podcasts and this many push, you know, man, I want it to sound good. So yeah, she, she hooked me up. I love it, dude. Well, I think most people watching definitely know you, but for those that don't, um, small intro, Coach Michael Burt, man, he's uh, he's one of the most popular uh, business coaches out there, coaches a lot of people from different industries, insurance, real estate, mortgages, uh, a lot of like, um, uh, I, I don't want to use, what are the, like, I don't want to say MLM because there's a better word for it, but those those companies that sell a bunch of stuff. Yep. I know you coach a lot of those guys um, and and you've helped me a ton. You know, we've had a cool relationship for the last, I don't know, a year and a half, two years going on now. And we're doing a lot of cool stuff together. Um, background, obviously, and literally coaching basketball coach by by trade. And has, I think you're, how many books now? Is it like 27, bro? Some it, crazy. That, the, the new one is 17. And then 17, I've got coming out to the real estate market with two guys and that'll be 18. So 17 and 18. 17. And flip the switch. I got 10 ordered already. Thank you. And, uh, and, and we're looking forward to it, dude. So one welcome and uh, happy to have you on dude today. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm really enjoying. It's interesting because when you have something to, to fight for and look forward to, yeah, like like this book coming out in, in January, it, it, it almost reactivates the prey drive in you because you got a game to play. You got a trophy to win. You've got a, a competition. And so it's been it's been really it's helped me even find a new gear in myself um, that that that's got me to a higher level than 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 previous. So it's all been a good thing. Yeah, isn't it? And I know that's what you talk about a lot. Obviously, I, it's weird, man. I have a lot of people ask, like, why I still work so much? And yeah. I find it like just to be the weirdest question ever. And then I try to explain it. I'm like, why am I even explaining why I work? I don't even understand. I get lost in it. Why do why do you think people struggle with that? Well, we've been kind of sold um, this concept that we're going to work till one day we're going to retire. And and the word retire literally means to take out of use. Yeah. It, it literally means there is no more utility left. Right. So. Yeah. Well, we've kind of been sold sold that hey we're going to build something like you did we're going to potentially sell it or we're going to work to an age and we're going to retire but what we really run out of when we are taken out of use is we run out of purpose and if you really study because my mom worked in nursing homes most of her life she um you know i asked her why people pass away at the end of their life just outside of natural causes or something that happened and she really said three things they run out of money number one mm -hmm. and because they run out of money they run out of good care they, they they don't have good care right and they need 24 hour care typically when they get older she said number two they run out of love nobody comes to see them nobody comes to visit them but she said the real reason they pass away is they actually run out of purpose yeah. there's just not a reason to get up and go into battle I talk about this in the book. King David was a great king in the Bible until he decided to stay home one year. And his own troops, it'd be like your people saying, John, stay home, take it easy, don't go into battle. That really was when his whole life went downhill, when he didn't go into battle. So there's, there's something about the way we're hardwired to get up and pursue, pursue something. And most people are very unhappy when they're not making progress towards something. And so just selling a business doesn't mean that your life's over. It doesn't mean that your purpose is over. Actually, I actually believe you've, you found more of your purpose after you sold your business. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think it's, um, you know, I just had a, uh, had a guy, like I have a dial room right there. There's like 15 desks. Anyone, any agent can come in anytime and dial. <clears throat> and I had a guy just literally walk in. He's like, Hey, I'm somewhere in your group. And uh, I work with this guy, I directed this person who hired me, and I'm trying to do this work from home thing, and it's terrible. And I'm like, yeah, I definitely know. He goes, I just figured I'd walk in and see if I could use your office and dial. How does it work here? He's never, he's never really been here. <clears throat> and I'm like, yeah, man, you can come downstairs and dial. You're always welcome to come do activity, whatever. And he goes, are there a lot of people down there dialing now? And I'm like, dude, sadly, no, bro. You'd think my office would be 
yep. chock full of people 24 seven. Yep. But it's not. Now we have agents all over the country doing crazy things, but physically like right out there, they're just me and my staff. Yep. Why do you think, do you, cause I, there's a lot of people, obviously this is very heavy with insurance agents, this, this yep. group, different lines, all lines of insurance. Yep. And I don't it, like, I don't think any of them are confused that they're not where they want to be. I don't think any of them are confused that they can improve their family situation, their financial situation, their lifestyle, all the things we, the basics. Why do you think that not only my office, but other offices or even your office or what, like, why do you think people know they need to do stuff and just don't like that? I would think family is a driver, right? Like some gives you some purpose. Yeah. But why, why do you, why do you, from your perspective, why do most people know they should do it and still don't do it? Like why are they stuck? So I address this in the book. There's a whole series of questions that I ask that, I, that are just questions I've wondered about my whole life. Why do good people yeah. turn bad? Why do people become lazy? Why do people not be, get interested in their potential? Why, why do people not want more for their life? And, and at the end of the day, when you really break down motivation, uh, all motivation begins by wanting something. OK, yep. and, if, and if you have satisfied needs, so let's say I'm an insurance person and I'm, I'm making one hundred thousand dollars a year or 50 or 60. And I've and that's kind of a set point. My let talks about your thermometer, you know, your thermostat. Let's say you set that set point at 50 or 60 thousand. You say I'm making good money. I got a nice little house. I got a good little life. The problem with that is it actually suppresses your prey drive. Prey drive is activated when you actually want something more than what you currently have. Now, you may be going along about life and not know any better and something comes in your life and it exposes you to something. So think of it as I see something and I and I like it, man. I'm like, that's good. I want that. I want a better life. But until that event happens, until that person walks into your life, until you watch that podcast, until you hear a person speak, until you go to a conference, you know, you never really know how to go get it. And that's really so it's kind of part not knowing. You know, I was talking to a young real estate agent yesterday and she's, you know, 40 something years old, three kids. And she said something to me that got my attention. She said, I've never invested more than a thousand dollars in my personal development, but I'm only doing 36 or 37 real estate deals. And I said, well, there's a direct correlation between you investing in yourself and learning new skills and the number of deals you're doing. Yeah. That Typically the top people who are doing the most deals are investing as much as 10% of their total income in coaching, strategy, masterminds. And so that's why they're doing more. They have more knowledge than other people. So that, to answer your question, until the prey drive is activated through something, embarrassment, think about your life, exposure, mm -hmm. environment. This is why coming to the office is so important. I would do any study in the world that could show you that people outperform other people most people when they're in an office and an environment where there's an expectation and an environment. And, but yeah. still it's easy to stay home in our pajamas, wear warm up suits. <laughs> it's, it's the path of least resistance, which is why. So, so don't, you know, now if you come to me and say, man, I'm making a million a year working at home in my pajamas, I'd say, keep, you know, stay, stay at home and work in your pajamas if you're okay with a million, but if you want 5 million, do yeah. you need to go where opportunity? <clears throat> yep. I love it. Um, it's, it's such a wild dynamic, dude. And I, it, it's weird. Cause I lived it for so long. Yep. You know what I mean? And I don't even know why I was stuck looking back on it. I'm like, cause I am, I was not who y'all know today by any means. And yep. one day for me, dude, it just, it's my, it changed in like an instant for me. It was really weird looking back on it. I don't know if that's for everybody or if it's gradual for some people. I just don't, I'm, all, I'm always so intrigued by it. Um, I think both, to be honest with you, I think, yeah. I think things build up. You reach a level of frustration or embarrassment mm -hmm. and you're just so sick of your performance that one day you just literally what the book title is, you flip the switch and it's over. And once you activate that drive, it's interesting because I used to coach this, this guy's worth about $300 million. And he used to say to me, when, when, when you go, when you, when you go pro in one area, you go pro in every area. It's amazing what happens when you make that decision, it's like you go pro physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. It's like, man, I'm tired of playing amateur ball here. I'm tired of making baby money. I'm tired of to, to having all this potential, but not doing something with it. I'm tired of it. And when you get sick and tired of, you know, I have a list of things that's, that's called my tired of effing around list. And it's a, uh, it's a list I update pretty regularly. And it's like, man, I'm sick of this, I'm sick of this, I'm sick of this, I'm sick of this, you know, I, yeah, yeah. What's just playing, 
yeah, huh? just just not having enough staff members, not capitalizing on leads that I generate. Uh, still at the it's still even at the income level I'm at, I still think it's you know my business was up nine ninety percent year over year this year. Yeah. Okay, so so in essence, it's about a million more dollars. I made about a million more dollars this year than I did last year. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, but I still look at that like look at the amount of force and energy I exerted for that million. And so it frustrates me. And so it's one of those things like, okay, what if I had seven more people? What if I had an office? What if I had 50 people on the phone? What if I had this? And eventually it's like, man, I'm going to do something because I'm just sick of talking about it. Yeah. What's the, this is a selfish question. What's, um, what's the deal? Cause you, you've been around some really high end people. Like you just did one guy, 300 million. I know I've heard some stories of you talking about some other guys that are worth like, they got some F you money. Yep. And I really believe I'm on the path, dude. I just, I don't have FU money yet. You know yep. what I'm saying? Like I do. Okay. What, what do you see as the difference between someone maybe like where you and I are at versus a guy that's worth three, four or 500 million, but like, what do you, what, how do, what's the, what's the differentiator or what, like, how do they get, you know what I'm saying? Like, what do you see different? Cause I don't, real, I'm not around those type of people. The real either. differentiator many times is um, the remarkable boldness they have. It's two things, the way they see money, number one, and the way they use money there. So their relationship with money is different. Okay. And they, they truly have total cash confidence that they can go make it if they lose it. So they're not afraid of losing it. Number one, which a lot of people make money and they store it because they're afraid of losing it. Uh, and that's a big difference between the big, big time people. And the other thing is just their remarkable boldness. Their, their disregard for what people think about them. They're, they're not, you know, they're willing to make big moves, big, bold moves. Yeah. You know, I'm having lunch with Chuck McDowell today. He's a guy that's lost everything, won everything. Yeah. He's got literally no fear. I mean, he started a mortgage company right in the middle of the, right in the middle of this thing. I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, some of the stuff, it's like, how does that guy do it? I mean, it's just, yeah. I mean, every time I'm with him, he's like, you got to get bolder. You got to really? get bold. If you're going to get to this level, you got to get bolder. And I think that's really at the end of the day, their skill sets sometimes are, you know, cause I've been around, uh, I spent a significant amount of time, you know, from 2012 to 2015 with around Cardone, uh, just mm -hmm. being down there in his offices, being around him, did events with him. I watched and observed his, uh, how high his prey drive was, but his, his, uh, action level was always really, really <coughs> significantly higher than other people. Uh, so if you take some of the insurance people and, I, and there's people, there's a big difference between being rich. And I would say if you make over a million a year, you're rich um, and, and, and wealthy and wealthy. I think you got to get up in the, you know, 10 million and above range or even 20 million and above range uh, to really be wealthy, you know, and there's a big difference between those levels. Yeah, I agree. And I, it's funny. I'm, you know, obviously I'm around Sean a lot and I'm just his, I think I, I feel like I work my butt off. And I see someone like him and I'm like, this is another gear. Yeah. It's multiple gear. It's crazy. You know, yeah. he's the one that I'm around the most. That's, that's done the, what the, the best in, in that, in that realm. So, um, and, and by the way, if any of y'all have questions, feel free to type them. If I see a good one, I'll put it up on the screen. Y'all can definitely interact here. Um, we don't have like a scripted conversation. Y'all know me. I just get in here and start talking and coach and I talk several times a week. So I'm just, enjoying more time with them to be honest but if y'all have anything please post it i can see the questions i'll put something on the screen if it's if it's a good one and uh happy to happy to have him answer some of these as well yeah um what do you see like um in the sales world yeah actually that's a good one let's do that i'm gonna i'm gonna show joe's because i like this topic Yep. Okay. I can, can see, you see that. that? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yep. You talk about A to B. I'm a, I, yeah. I like this a lot. Yeah. I actually wrote this down in my notes. Um, Thanks, Jeff. The, the, in, in the new book, Flip the Switch, a lot of what I'm, the whole book is about moving a person from where they are, which is A. A is your current position. Okay. And it's everything you don't like about your current position. And it's not income specific. Like, like, like you, you're, you, you say, look, no, my, no matter where I'm at, these are things I'm really frustrated with. This is A. And then I am moving toward B. And B needs to be typically some tangible outcome that I'm trying to drive in a concentrated period of time. And I'm moving with a persistence and an intensity toward that B. Now, what's interesting to me is a lot of people, when I ask them that question, what's your B? 
they're not clear. Yeah. And if you study the subconscious mind, which I did for, for this book, the, the subconscious mind tells me that if you don't tell the brain what to do, it doesn't take an action toward anything. It literally just gets up and takes the path of least resistance, which is why you see me always have my remarkable, you see me always taking notes. You see me always doing A to B. A, I'm current yeah. position. And it could be here's seven things I'm frustrated with. B is, okay, in an ideal world, these are the three things I'm doing every day. This is the revenue my company's doing. This is the life I'm living. This is, right? So it gives me something to wake up every day and progress toward. And when I'm making progress, I'm, I'm <laughs> happy and I'm excited. But a lot of people, you ask them, hey, what's your B? What, what are you trying to do? And they really can't tell you. Yeah. And, and without that vision, the, the subconscious mind really doesn't do anything. It just wakes up and it takes a path of least resistance every single day. So for you, you may say, I want to build an agency. Yeah. I want to add five team members. I want to get my business to doing a million dollars a year. I want to personally make a million dollars a year. I want to do this. See this every day you wake up and then that really separates the high value from the low yeah. value. High value activity moves you toward your bees. If there's a yeah. person on there who wanted to sell an insurance agency, mm -hmm. those things, you know, don't magically happen. So you, there's things you got to do. How many agents do I need to build? What structures do I need to have in place? Who do I need to learn and grow from? Right? So, so B is an ideal outcome that we're working toward, which serves a purpose to activate and reactivate the prey drive. Makes sense. What about a guy that has a B? Right? I see this a lot, man. Um, they have their B. I don't know how solid it is or isn't. It's probably irrelevant. And then like they get... I don't know. They go out and they make some sales presentations this week and they're, they're like, they don't fight through those difficult times. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like they, I, I see a lot of people go like, all right, I'm going to, this is my year. This is my month. I'm going to turn it up. I'm ready to start killing it this year. And I'm going to be a top producer and I'm going to hit this level and hall of fame, whatever they're, whatever they're saying. And then they pick up the phone and they get whacked a few times and they immediately like get stuck in the mud, dude. So yeah. it's like, they have, it seems verbally they have a why. It seems like they have some kind of be where they want to go. Dude, I see so many people like judge a random Tuesday like it's their entire career failed. Yeah. You know? Well, I think um, it, it starts with expectation. Okay. And expectation is, yeah, I, here's my expectation. No matter what I get into, here's what I have found. It is going to take longer than I thought it was going to. It's going to be harder than I thought it was going to be. It's going to cost more money than I thought it was going to. Amen. <laughs> so, so look at my expectation. I don't expect it to be easy. I expect it to be a fight, but we're going to find a way to win. Okay. So, so my mindset is it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard. Okay. When it's easy, it's like, well, that's, that was a flop because it was easy. Okay. So for you, I think a lot of people start with inaccurate expectation. I'm going to get an insurance license. I'm going to make a million dollars my first year. All right. And a lot of your income is in direct proportion to your skill level. Yeah. The stronger the skill level, the more income you're going to make. And so what a lot of people don't do is they don't get interested in mastery. So they start and they quit and they start and they quit and they start and they quit and they never really master something. Selling on the phone is a skill. Selling in person is a skill, right? There's technique, there's scripts, but there's also instinct. How do you, how do you make a person feel comfortable? How do you get them to take an action? How do you articulate value? How do you follow up and bring a person to a close? So what happens is, uh, prey drive, P R E Y D R I V E is, is prevalent in animals. And it is an animal's instinct to stalk, capture and kill prey. Prey drive in a human is the ability to see something with the eyes or in the mind. So you said, Hey, it's going to be my best month ever. It's in the mind, but that's only one part. Now I gotta activate <laughs> yeah. that drive every day. Now, I, now I got to persist with that drive every day. Now I've got to have an intensity with that drive every day. So people go to work and they, they freeze money follows energy, money follows attention, money follows circulation, money never follows stagnation. So the prey drive has to be activated every morning to go get it. Now, let me go back to one thing. Cause Joe had asked about this. A big reason a person stays motivated over a long cycle of time is what is what's called because goals. And a because goal is a big reason to do something when you don't feel like it. Okay. Because I'm sick of being poor, because I'm sick of being number 300, because I'm sick of this. 
because I grew up poor and I never want to be poor again because I got three kids. I want, right. Yeah. That overrides my feelings. Okay. And, and so between a and B, there's typically something that's keeping a person going from a to B. Is it their knowledge? Johnny, is it their skill? Is it their desire? Which will be prey drive. Is it their confidence? Or is it their relationships? Those are typically five things that keep people moving from A to B, or they don't have, they don't know what their because goals are. Yeah. It's funny. I obviously, I just saw Johnny comment too. He, uh, we were, we we're in one of these groups the other day commenting or something. And I, I made a joke about a guy that did a call and he was like really transparent about leads. You know what I mean? He, 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 he's in marketing and he sells leads or whatever. And he's like, he, the way he described them was unlike most because he wasn't trying to pretend he had magic leads. And I made some smart comment about, oh, you mean they're not magic? And I don't remember how the whole thing went, but Johnny commented and he was like, I wish they were. I wish I booked them all. You know what I mean? I wish it were easy. Some comment like that. And I'm like, dude, you actually don't wish they were. E it was easy because if they were, everyone would do it. It wouldn't pay as much. And you wouldn't be who you are in the industry today because he has something others don't. You know what I'm saying? And it's like a lot of people do wish it was easy. I'm like, I'm like. Walmart's easy. That's mm -hmm. why it pays like crap, you know, and anyone can walk in and do it. So I, I enjoy the journey of hard. Now I enjoy doing hard things and I enjoy being someone that can fight through difficult things because I, I like being looked at as someone that will stick with things when most won't, yeah. you know, and it, it, it makes it really easy to stand out when, when you kind of fight through that stuff daily. Well, this is um, why we get into the habits of the top 1% in the book. Yeah, and yeah. and two of the habits of the top 1% are grit and resilience. All the top people have that. And the other one that I like that people don't talk about is the ability to lock in and see something through to its conclusion. Yeah. To, to, sure. to Yesterday, I was coaching a young group of real estate agents. And I said, see a lead. How do you see a lead through to the maturation of the lead? And the yeah. young man said, what does maturation mean? And I said, it means maturity of the lead. Okay. Now national averages on follow-up for most people, 1.8 times. Every statistic in America tells me we should be going seven to 15. The top people keep coming. They just keep coming. You can't knock them down. They keep, you can't keep them down. Pandemics, bad economies, uh, lose everything. Like, like, like literally there's two things they have is that grit and resilience, grit being a combination of passion, perseverance, and uh, resilience being the ability to use adversity or leverage adversity to actually activate the prey drive. You actually need the adversity sometimes to activate your prey drive. Uh, without conflict, then many times you never get to the level that I'm talking about in this book, which is a freakish level. When you see people doing things like, man, how does that dude get to that level? Yeah. He's using he's using rocket he's using adversity as rocket fuel. He's using yeah. negativity as rocket fuel. He's using you know, getting good and pissed off is rocket fuel. That's what he's doing. Yeah, that's that's my fuel, bro. <laughs> that's a, I'm I'm like a, I'm a fu kind of driven kind of guy, that's and uh, you know, it is what it is. That's what what would I'm curious on something, and we've never talked about this before. And you know, it's it's funny. Obviously, I do a lot of recruiting in the business, and where um, I'll put that up in a second, Joe. And uh, you know, I think one of the mistakes people make recruiting is they they literally try to sell them on the dream here and in insurance hire everybody and then get frustrated with the lack of result or people's quit or give up level you know what i mean and they just there's if you were on if you were to speak from the side and i know you're getting in the business obviously you don't you aren't at a point where you've recruited at a mass Right. But if you were talking to a guy like Johnny or some Ryan or some of these other guys that have been in the business for a little bit, and maybe they're trying to build or whatever, Joe, how would you advise knowing that we're looking for these qualities in, in, in people that are hungry and want to do big things? How would you advise people go about like discerning who might be a good hire and someone to work with versus who's not like, are there questions you would, how would you, you know I mean, just knowing what you know about the business and, the struggles we've talked about building and scaling and you know what I mean? How, how would you advise they kind of weed people out in your opinion? I'm curious. Well, in some ways, in some ways, like gravitate toward like, but in mm -hmm. some ways fountains, uh, drains are attracted to fountains. And so, so in some ways when you're hiring people, 
you, you, you're looking at their work ethic, although it doesn't always correlate. For example, I hired a person once because they worked out at 430 every morning at CrossFit. And I just swore, I told my wife, I said, I know they got to have some toughness about them. Yeah. They did have toughness for CrossFit, but they didn't have toughness for my work. Yeah. So it taught me a valuable lesson just because they're tough in one area of life doesn't mean they're tough in every, every area of life. Yeah. And so what you're really looking for when you're hiring people is their prey drive, which would be their, their ability to embrace the suck, their mm -hmm. perspective. You're, you're looking for how do they show up uh, over and over. When we interview people today, uh, they typically go through an interview of four or five people, including my wife, because she is a, a great BS indicator. And yeah. she's great at, 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 you know, I like people who look good. And actually, you know, I like plow horses versus show horses. And uh, the only way to know if you're a plow horse is, is in many ways to put you in the fight and see, see if you just keep going, right? Yeah. I really believe, John, that, that I could get hired by almost any company in the world today mm -hmm. and within a very short period of time, move the needle, move the revenue needle, move the operational needle, move the customer needle just because of the skill sets I've tried to develop over the years. But, but what I have found is that not everybody, not many people can do that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, if I said, Hey man, I'm hiring you to come over here to run my coaching business and I'm expecting you to help us drive more revenue. <coughs> I would think a very talented person would be able to walk in, learn the game pretty quickly and get on the phones and start selling. Okay. And just creating. But, but I have found that it's not really that easy. That's why skilled labor is a lot harder to find in today's society and especially people with a high prey drive. Uh, it's yeah. just, it's, it's uncommon in many ways. Yeah. What's your intentionality or how do you go about, I struggled with how different everybody is, different personalities, um, the way people hear things, feel things, learn, like how do you, what's your intentionality there? Cause I think that that'll help a lot of people. So a, a lot of us struggle with that. It's like, you can't coach everybody the same. Yeah, I assume, I assume you have some. Thought well, I do, I do. I think what I try to figure out, and this kind of goes to Tony Merwin's question as well, is I really, I, I really believe you could sum people up into four categories, knowledge, skill, desire, and competence. Every person and top people have those four things. When they don't have those four things, you have what's called a critical conversation. And I kind of, I have critical conversations with people on, on my team every day, man, you're not putting the effort in. Your skill level is not where it needs to be. Your income is in proportion to your skill level, right? Your, your, your confidence is not where it needs to be. I would do this different. So a good coach has the ability. It's just kind of hardwired in a good coach to have what's called critical or crucial conversations with people and just be honest with them, man. You're not playing at the level you're capable of at. And it's one of these four things, knowledge. You don't know what you're doing skill. You don't know how to do it very well. <laughs> effort, you don't put the effort in as defined by how many high value activities, how many phone calls, or, man, you just don't have confidence, which is always a byproduct of knowledge, skill, and desire. So that's why I love the whole person theory, body, mind, heart, and spirit. Yeah. You know, that, that's, yeah. The, you could give me any insurance agent today and I could very quickly observe which of those areas they need help in. And the people making the most money are incredibly strong in all four areas. Yeah. Makes sense. I love it. What um, what do you got coming up, dude? That people can attach themselves to you. I, I want to let you give out because I know you got a ton going on. You're always doing. I, yeah, I get to obviously be around you a little bit. You work a lot, bro. <laughs> and you in that uh, remarkable. I'm like, I watch you do that, and I'm like, I wish I could be that organized and take that many notes and and remember where I put them. Yep. Um, but what do you what do you got coming up, man? That. People can maybe have an opportunity to get around you, get coached by you. Got, I know we got some things coming up together. What, what do you what do you have that you want to share? Well, the, the first thing I think people can do is, you know, if they purchase the book, I'm doing a big event on the 13th called Activate. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's all around the new book, the launch book. Um, it's, it's, you know, if, if you it's free, the event's completely free, but we do encourage people to buy the book. Uh, if you go to my website, coachbert.com or, you know, the website you guys have been posting, then boom, you can purchase the book and then you get access to all these other things. I give you a breakdown of how I visionary year. I give you audio recordings of the book. I give you all these 90 days of prey drive for lunch every Wednesday. So we're really encouraging people to, to purchase the book, but the 13th would be the next thing <coughs> they could do. Obviously I've coached a lot of top insurance people on how to become people of interest. Mm -hmm. So I have a boot camp called person of interest. 
and the Michael Burt School of Speaking, Coaching, and Writing, which really teaches people how to take a message and bring it to the marketplace to position themselves as key experts in the industry. Yeah, I love it. Did Hey, did you see the email I sent you a few minutes ago yet? I did, like, yeah. I just said it was not coming in. Yep, good, cool. So Coach is going to, for those that are with us or want to come see, you know, obviously we have a big event every year, um, early February in uh, Lone Depot Park, and Coach is going to be a, a, a headline keynote speaker there. So we're finalizing details of schedule and things like that. So he'll be with us. I think it's the February, I'm not on the calendar, first, second, third, that first weekend in February. So that'll be cool. Probably, I don't know, 15 plus thousand people there speaking. So it'll be, it'll be cool to see there. What's the most you've spoken in front of at once, dude? I'm curious. Uh, I think probably 10 X 10,000 at Mandalay Bay. Um, it was the biggest audience at one time, 10,000 yeah. at Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, 10 X. Yeah. Yeah. If y'all haven't seen him speak in person, dude, it's, I love it. Like I'm not afraid to get up and talk in front of people, but dude, your skill set's a different level. <laughs> I'm in the back trying to study it. Like, and obviously you gave me some feedback last time. I'm like, all right, I gotta, I got stuff to work on, dude. Well, yeah. just like you've been, you know, doing insurance and you've reached mastery level there and you, you know, that's what I've been doing for, you know, the last really 20 years Yeah, is being on he, small stages and big stages and tough audiences and big audiences and, yeah. You know, and and uh, it's just a long obedience in the same direction where you learn. It's more instinctual today than it than it than anything, because yeah. I can uh, and refinement of a message. What do I really want to say to the world? Who do I yeah. want to help? What's my skill set to help those people? And I and I feel like I found that in Pray Drive. All of my concepts I, I really love, but but this Pray Drive concept is um, is who I am, right? I mean, it's it's me. Yeah, it's the intentionality I like when you deliver stuff, but the engagement dude is next level. Yeah. That's the piece I think you crush. I'm like, if I, 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 I'm, I'm this year I'm working on that. Like yeah. I speak, I'm going to be, Oh, look at that. My wife just posted. Look at her you go, on Stephanie. Us. Thank you. <laughs> Thank well, you. To me, to me, I'm a coach. Hey, so. be clear. She's never come on a show yet. She's here for <laughs> you, bro. This ain't cause of me. <laughs> well, I got, I got something to tell you is that, is that my wife was so excited to get some of those shoes that Stephanie told me to get her as I got her, I got her two pair and I think my wife loves them. I think she sleeps them at night. That's how much she loves those things. So, so I can thank her for, for getting me to get those expensive shoes, but my wife was a hundred percent excited. She has the best Christmas gifts I'd ever got. <laughs> I love it. That's so cool. Um, what, uh, what do you want to, so I always try to give, I would try to end it. And again, if anybody has any questions you want to, we'll, we'll wrap on them. You can put them up and we'll wrap soon, but I always like to give, agents something from each person it is tactical thursdays and i like people to be able to walk away and you've given obviously a ton of stuff mm -hmm. but if you could talk to an individual insurance agent and tell them something they can literally hit end on this show and go do right now to improve their yeah. business situation give them give them something a couple things whatever you want there um I believe selling. I did a whole podcast last night with a guy in Asia. It's 9 a.m. in Asia, 7 p.m. in Tennessee. And he he asked me what my philosophy was on selling. Okay. And I like to make this real simple for everybody. Selling is money exchanges hands when problems are solved. Everybody either has a problem or they have an ambition. Okay. And so what I do that's very tactical when I'm talking to people is I initiate. I initiate a lot, which means I initiate conversations a lot with people. Okay. Uh, I connect with people and then I locate their ambition. And the craziest question is a real simple question. I ask people, what are you trying to do? And, and almost everybody tells me, I've never had a person not tell me I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to do yeah. this. I'm trying, if I was selling insurance, it'd be the exact same way, man. Are you trying to protect your family? Something would have happened to you. Yeah. You know, I, do you feel like you're properly protected? And, and most people are not, as you know, as you told me, 70 something percent of people are not. And I just have a conversation with them. But, but once I locate the ambition, once I locate their desire, once I locate their problem, now I know how I can help them. And that is really important. So, so it's a real simple formula. I initiate, I connect, I locate their ambition, and I invite them to take an action. Okay. I invite them to take the next step because I try to keep that momentum going. And if they don't take action that day, I keep them in a forward position and I'm pretty, pretty strong in our follow-up. 
And I do believe that you keep following up until you bring, you bring it through to its natural conclusion. And many people just don't do that. It's on dreams, ideas, selling partnerships, you know, so that is a real tactical thing I do every day. But if you follow me around, you see me do it over and over. I initiate yeah. with people. I locate follow what the beast. Do, and then I yeah. follow up until I bring, until I bring it to a decision, which means to cut something yeah. away. Yeah. I, Joe, I did see your question. I'll post in a second uh, to, to, to second on that dude on the follow-up stuff. Cause you definitely engaged with me a lot when we were yep. first started talking and I liked, it. it was like actual videos to me. It, I, I get some people that send me videos and they're like, Hey, and you can tell they sent the same video to 47 people. Yep. You're super intentional there. But what do you say to the average agent that I hear a lot, dude, with follow up? I didn't want to bother them. I think they're busy. Like, how, what, what's your thoughts there? Because you don't give a no, rip. No, th those are internal. Those are internal considerations. The truth is you can't lose something you don't have. And if you following up with a person uh, scares them off, then you never had it to begin with. And, and they're not really interested or maybe they're just not interested today. So to me... Uh, I was a disciple of Covey and one of the strongest things Covey taught was between stimulus and response is a space. And in that space lies our ability to choose our response. And what that really means in the sales cycle is I can't control John Wetmore's response. All I can control is my stimulus. And I believe objects at rest, stay at rest unless acted on by an outside force. So I didn't wake up to, to thinking I want to buy more life insurance today, but that doesn't mean I don't need more life insurance. So, so I probably go on about my life until something comes along and stimulates that. So follow-up is stimulating that desire. It is, it is showing people how you can solve a problem that they may or may not know. Like if a person called me today and said, look, man, I know you're trying to sell 10,000 units of this book. I got a special plan to do it. I've done it for the last four people. You know, I've been kind of a secret. Not all people know about me, but if I could do this for you, would you be open to it? And I would say yes, because it solves a problem for me. Yeah. It, right. So, so you got to think of yourself but I see people really follow up poorly. I've seen big time people follow up poorly. They just send yeah. random messages. When you're following up, go back to the problem. Show people how you can solve that problem. Remind them of the problem that they had. Show them how you can help them with their ambition. Bring a real strategy to the equation. And people are quite frankly pretty lazy when it comes to that part. Yeah, they are. I, you pointed out obviously identifying the primer when you asked me like what I was trying to do. I remember yeah. that conversation, you know. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I think a lot of the salespeople are so focused on making the sale and not identifying and solving a problem. Maybe that's where the fear lies. See, I don't call people to make sales. I call no, people you don't, yeah. to connect. And mm -hmm. once I connect, you know, I called a guy yesterday. I said, I just want to connect, see what you're doing. I'm watching you on Facebook. Uh, you seem like you're ready to go pro. What's two, one or two missing structures you've got right now? And he said sales because he's a franchise guy. He said sales. And, I, and, and I, I really want to be a person of interest. And I said, man, if you really want to be a person of interest, now, let me tell you how I would use that strategy to generate more leads for your franchise business. If that's your number one thing, I said, man, I've got two boot camps coming up. If it's of interest to you, I'm going to send it to you. You look at it, review it. I'll follow back up with you to see if I can get you in the room with me. I love it. That's easy. It's easy, man. And all he can do is say no. And it's not going to hurt my feelings. If he says no, I'm just going to keep on moving to the next person. Yeah. I love it. And with this one, man. Joe wants to know if you'll share your daily schedule. Daily schedule is, is I'm at my best and my prey drive is at highest when I'm up at 420. When I'm in the gym at 5 a.m., I go to Rockbox, which is a boxing gym. Uh, so we box for 30 minutes. We do high functional fitness for 30 minutes. Uh, I leave the gym at 6. I typically do a morning video for all the people who follow me. I go home and spend about 30 to 40 minutes with my kids in the mornings. I uh, have breakfast with my wife. And then I kind of move into activating my business prey drive. So I'm trying to feed all four parts of my nature on my way to the gym. It's about 10 minutes. I listen to about a 10 minute sermon that feeds my faith. Then I work out. It feeds my body. Then uh, I've spent time. My kids feeds my heart. Then I always listen to something on business. Maybe I'm listening to a book right now on audible, but there's something that, that I'm trying to activate because that prey drive has to be activated daily. You have to activate it to go into battle every single day. Inconsistency is a killer of momentum, man. I'm telling you. So over a period of time, it becomes what we call it in the sports world, muscle memory. It's where you just, you just do it because that's what you do. You don't know any other way to do it. You know, my wife said to me one day, it's almost as if you don't recognize when you're tired. She's like, I've never seen a person 
that doesn't recognize fatigue. And I said, yeah. fatigue is a feeling. And, uh, and so I've just learned to fight through those feelings um, and not think about it because my B is really big. I got a big B and that, and that's what keeps me motivated. I love it, man. Well, I appreciate your time. If there's anything you want to share that we left out, you certainly can. Um, no, I think, I think, man, I love working with the insurance people. I've loved it for years. Uh, I remember meeting, uh, you know, you and Stephanie and, and Dallas, I immediately knew you were two people I wanted to, to interact with. And I'm not afraid, man. I just walk right up to people and say, man, Hey, you look like somebody I need to know. Y'all are well put together. You're a good looking couple. seems like you have some success. I can, you know, and I just walk right up and start conversation with them, man. And that's what a lot of people don't do. And, and I don't know where it's going to go. It may go nowhere. And in some cases it has gone nowhere, but you know, I mean, you look at that experience the very next night I was in your car in the back seat going different places with you. So it's like, yeah. look at what that's led to though. I mean, we're going to do major things in the insurance world. Uh, we're, we're, we're already doing major things, uh, you know, with your agents and all kinds of people, we're going to do bigger things, right? This is yeah. just the beginning, but it wouldn't have happened if I would have just walked past you that night, got in the car and, and went yeah. on about my business. Yeah. That's funny. I remember like walking in the lobby there and we kind of made eye contact a little yeah. bit. I didn't, I knew of you. I don't know what you, we didn't know each other at all. And literally me and Steph waiting for our car outside. I think we were waiting for, for valet or whatever. We walked right out. Hey man, just like he said, it's, it's right. wild to think how intentionality can lead. And it's led to some cool stuff. And you and I have obviously talked about some really big things we're working on for this year. So I'm excited about it, dude. Enjoying the relationship, enjoy learning from you and uh, look forward to a bunch more conversations. So appreciate your time today. Thanks for getting yep. on the syndicate. But thank and, you guys. Uh, and do one thing for me, man. Just buy that book. Go, go buy <laughs> one copy of that book. If you didn't do anything with me, just get one copy of flip the switch at my website. It's right up on the middle of coachbird.com purchase the book. You're going to get a lot of, a lot of free coaching when you purchase that book, but we're trying to do some big things. So thank yeah, you. for that. I, you, know. you got it, dude. I'd say if anyone's in the business trying to build, you should buy multiple books and give them to your guys. Yeah. Like why not? I agree with that. Gift them to people. So appreciate it, coach. All right, great day. Thank you guys. Have a Later. great day. Talk See soon. Guys.